Hey guys, today we are gonna talk about bagels. You know me, I can't resist like a good baking project and bagels might be kind of like on the top of the list. When I was growing up, bagels were like my favorite snack in all of the world, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and it pretty much still is the same today. So let me show you how to make homemade bagels. Okay, first let's get started by making a yeast mixture. That's what's gonna make these bagels kind of like rise really nicely. I've got two and a half teaspoons of dry active yeast. We're just gonna put that into the bowl of our stand mixer. To that, I've got one cup of room temperature water and then one tablespoon of honey. The honey is not gonna to add too much sweetness to the bagel, but it's just gonna make the yeast activate a little faster. We're gonna let that sit for one to two minutes until the mixture becomes nice and frothy. We're gonna add three and a half cups of bread flour. We're using bread flour because it's gonna create that kind of really chewy, bagel-y texture that we like so much. And you can usually find bread flour right next to the all-purpose flour. We're also gonna add two teaspoons of salt. And then with a stand mixer fitted with a dough hook, we're just gonna knead this for a couple minutes. Okay, my dough is looking a little shaggy, which means it needs kind of a couple more tablespoons of water. So it'll depend on how dry your flour is at home. So it's basically just add a couple tablespoons of water at a time. You don't wanna to add too much because it's hard to kind of take that back. Okay, so my dough has been mixing for about five to seven minutes. Let's give it a check. Because we're using bread flour, it's gonna be a really kind of tight, gluten-filled ball of dough, so it might be a little hard to roll out. You want it to be generally smooth and a little tacky. Because there's more gluten in the bread flour, that's why it's kind of like tougher to roll out. It kind of fights you a little bit. And if at any time it gets too hard to roll out or too hard to knead, you can just give it like a couple minutes and those gluten strands will just relax and then it'll be easier to knead. But I think we are ready. So my dough is ready. We're gonna put it into a bowl and let it hang out for a couple hours until it doubles in size. You could also put it in the refrigerator overnight and let it proof in your fridge. That way you can have like fresh bagels for breakfast. If you do decide to do that, make sure you take it out a half an hour before you move on to the next step. Okay, so my dough is risen and it's ready to be rolled out. So first, we're gonna just punch it down, which is kind of like my favorite part when it comes to baking, and then we're gonna just pull it out of the bowl. So we wanna shape these into the actual bagels at this point, but we want to make sure we have even bagels. So I have a kitchen scale, which is a great tool, and we're just gonna pull off about four ounce pieces from this dough. If you do kind of like three and a half to four ounces per piece of dough, you'll get about eight bagels. It's a little small. I used to be really good at this. <laughs> there we go. And then just set the dough off to the side and just repeat with the remaining dough. And if you don't have a kitchen scale, it's totally fine. You can just eyeball it. I would recommend maybe getting a scale. I'll link my favorite one below. Okay, so I have my eight pieces of dough. They're just kind of in little balls. Just gently using your hand, we're gonna roll them out into eight inch long ropes. Okay, so I have my approximately eight inch long rope. This is how we're gonna form the bagels. So we're gonna take our hand and we're gonna place it the backside down on top of the rope. We're gonna grab one piece of the rope with our thumb and then just roll over so you have something that kind of looks like maybe a bracelet. <laughs> and then taking this seam, we're just gonna roll over the seam on the cutting board. And you wanna make sure to really kind of make that seam stick or else it'll come apart when you're baking them. And it doesn't have to be perfect. These are homemade. So there is a bagel. I'm gonna put it on a parchment lined baking sheet and we're gonna repeat with the remaining dough and then we're gonna let them rise for about half an hour or until they're doubled in size. So my bagels have risen. They already look so good. So obviously they are not perfect and round in shape, but they're homemade, so don't beat yourself up about it. So the next step, which is kind of like a little counterintuitive, but to make sure that we're ready to kind of continue cooking our bagels is we're gonna do a float test. So what a float test is, is you have a bowl of water and you basically put one of the bagels into the bowl of water and if it floats, then that means it's ready to be cooked. If it sinks to the bottom, then you wanna give it kind of like another 15 minutes to rise. So let's check our bagels. So one bagel kind of into the water and since it floats, it's ready to be cooked. So before the bagels are ready to be baked, you actually poach them first. So I've got a big pot of boiling water. 
We're gonna add one tablespoon of baking soda, and it kind of like fizzes up a little bit. And then we're gonna add something called barley malt syrup. You could also add honey if you can't find this at the grocery store. But this, in combination with the baking soda, is gonna kind of create that really nice golden brown kind of outside to our bagels. Just add one tablespoon. And it's kind of like really thick like molasses. So we're gonna take one bagel and then just gently lower it into the simmering water. And we're gonna boil them for about two to three minutes. I know it seems like completely counterintuitive to boil like dough, but this is what makes that kind of like crunchy outside texture on your bagel. So you wanna make sure you poach both sides, so just gently give it a turn kind of like halfway through. So when I was growing up, we kind of have an afternoon snack every day when you come home from school. And mine was always like a Lenders bagel, not even toasted, with cream cheese. That is kind of like what I ate throughout my childhood. I've kind of graduated maybe to a little more sophisticated version of a bagel snack, but it's really hard to be like a really well-made, homemade bagel. So my bagels are perfectly poached. We're gonna remove them. And then I have two kind of toppings here. I have poppy seeds and then I have an everything bagel mix. So we're just gonna gently lower it into the topping. Then carefully, it's pretty warm, but just move it around so everything gets covered and then flip it over back onto the baking sheet. And then just repeat with the remaining bagels. You can add whatever topping you want. I love poppy seeds, even though they get in your teeth and everything bagel is like so tasty. So I know everyone doesn't have access to a Trader Joe's, but if you do, this is their everything but the bagel kind of sesame topping that I'm using. It kind of has like a cult-like status because it's so tasty. So this is what I'm using on top of half of my bagels. Um, but if you don't have a Trader Joe's near you, you can find something similar, but I just wanted to point that out. So my bagels are topped, they're nice and fluffy from the poaching, into a 450 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're nice and golden brown. So my bagels are out of the oven and they look amazing, but they smell even better. You should probably just make this recipe so your house can smell like homemade bagels. It's the best. So they're perfectly cooked and ready to be eaten. I'm gonna let them cool for a couple minutes and then dig on in. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up below and make sure to hit subscribe because I upload new recipe videos each week.